This is Seamus here with The True Story. Now I'm fairly certain a lot of you are thinking I'm only going to be covering games made under the PlayStation brand, but I'm not. So to break that trend, we'll be looking at a game made for Microsoft's noise-making machine, the Xbox 360. And no, I won't be covering games like this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Hmm, oh. might cover that game later. No, today I'll be covering Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. I don't know anyone on the information superhighway, or the internet as the kids call it nowadays, who doesn't know about Naruto. In my case, it was the first manga series I ever read, and I haven't stopped reading it since. The story of Naruto follows... Um, that's a tough one. Uh, Twelve years prior to the beginning of the series, a nine-tailed fox attacks the Hidden Leaf Village. A lone man known as the Fourth Hokage was able to seal the nine tails away into the body of a young boy who just so happens to be Naruto, our protagonist. Throughout the course of the series, we get to see the exploits and evolution of Team 7, which includes the likes of a Munchkin, a Goth, Amy Rose, and a Ninja Pirate. While the series did become a success in Japan, it exploded in America, pretty much making Dragon Ball Z seemingly obsolete. With popularity comes products, and products include SEXY BODY PILLOWS! Oh, and video games. Which brings us full circle to the topic of today's review, Naruto Shippuden, Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. Will it bring in new fans, or will it just attract the gullible? That's not to say that I'm gullible. I like Naruto, so I buy the game- OH GOD I AM GULLIBLE! The story picks up right after the events of the second game, though Storm 3 doesn't even attempt to get new fans up to speed. So I'm gonna do their job for them, for all you wonderful people. Ninjas, ninjas, bad guys, death, ninjas, death, ninjas, ninjas. Oh, did I mention ninjas? NINJAS! A five kage summit is being held, which piques the interest of Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto's rival and but but <coughs> best friend. Chaos soon ensues and leads to the outbreak of war, with Madara Uchiha leading the charge. Now it's up to the newly formed allied ninja force to stop the oncoming threat and save the world from cataclysmic consequences. The story itself is rather grand and has some damn fine moments in it. But there is a flaw that cripples its potential, and that is the pacing. The previous games covered at least 20 volumes from the manga, but this game covers just over 10, so there's a lot less story to work with. Because of this, needless padding through extending the length of cutscenes with characters just talking with little to no action are given to us. For an example, the fourth chapter of the story contains a single boss fight, with the rest of it being nothing but cutscenes. Sure, the actual cutscenes in that segment were very emotional, and some moments can definitely be considered tearjerkers. I won't deny that. But the segment lasts for over an hour! If I wanted to watch badly paced storytelling with obnoxious orange suited ninjas rather than play a game based on said ninja, I'd just watch the anime series. Believe it! 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 Never mind. Though the horrible pacing does lead to characters developing and giving the game a more cinematic feel, that's no excuse for needless padding. All problems aside, the part that makes the Storm series unique is still intact. Those memorable boss fights are still here, peppered with well-implemented quicktime events. It also helps that they all have a spectacular sense of scale, with some exceptional set pieces that stand head over heels above other anime games. Though it seems like there are less of them than in Storm 2, which when considering the amount of battles they could have implemented this time around, is a huge missed opportunity. The developers tried to spice these fights up by adding the ability to choose your path, with clear indications as to which is the harder option. Depending on your choices, hero or legend points are given to you, which helps boost your ninja arsenal. What could have made this mechanic more interesting would have been to take away the legend and hero points, as well as the difficulty indicator, leaving the player with a choice, based solely on what they think is the best option for battle. So while the story is ultimately disappointing, that isn't to say there aren't other things to do. There are a metric ton of side quests to do, including one that helps develop the story slightly. In spite of that, none of them are really worth doing because of the meager rewards you get for completing them. Actually getting to some of them requires you to travel around the world map, or just to use transportation if you're lazy. While the environments you trek through are diverse, the world just doesn't feel as large or expansive as Storm 2, and listening to that one constant audio track while traveling might aggravate some players. At its core, the Storm series is a free-roaming fighting game, with the option to go at it solo or with a team of supports. 
Battles feel frantic and fast, with the constant worry of having no chakra left to perform dashes or special moves. Though if things get too hectic, you can go into an awakened state for one final push. Substituting attacks are also present, giving you the chance to retreat a beatdown four times before recharging, making Storm 3 a game heavily reliant on resource management. For some bizarre reason, the combos you can perform have been reduced from 4 to 3. I just can't ascertain why this was done. It really limits the amount of options a player has in battle, so why remove it when it wasn't doing any harm to begin with? For those of you looking for depth, go back to Blaze Blue or Super Street Fighter 4 Ultra Arcade Edition version 2013.254627. For combo crafting in Storm 3, all that's there is mashing the attack button, while occasionally holding down or up to produce a different combo. Though it may look like it, the combat isn't mindless, since you'll need to counterattack an opponent who substitutes behind you. In short, position and dominance is key when fighting opponents. The engine is well implemented as a fighting game, but when that engine is brought into a 3D beat-em-up environment, that praise goes right out the window. Since the enemies rarely block, and giving the player the option to warp to another enemy, skill and strategy doesn't really apply here. Instead, it rewards mashing the attack button over and over and over again. Thankfully, this style of combat only shows up in story mode, and it rarely makes an appearance. The game's mechanics are balanced, but the issues come in when regarding the character roster. I could go on for hours about the balance issues presented, but the largest one is the speed of attacks. Essentially, if one character is faster than another, the victory is almost certainly in their favor. Add to that the range of attacks, overpowered special moves and awakenings, and the newest addition of giving some characters the opportunity to awaken at any time completely ruins this game's chances of ever being played on a professional level. It's as if the developers only cared about putting in as many characters as possible rather than trying to make a balanced fighting game. Sure, over 80 playable characters is a high number, but it seems pointless when you take into consideration that over half of them simply can't hold their own against the rest of the cast. These problems are only escalated while playing online. A majority of players spam moves constantly, abuse broken elements of a character, and are always given the option to leave a game in progress with no penalty. In short, online play isn't for the faint of heart, so tread carefully. The horrible community really ruins the experience, but what makes it worse is that the modes available while playing online are done well. The ability to play ranked in player matches, being able to customize whether to play with a team or with one character, the ability to make rooms, and making 4-8 to eight man tournaments, with the option of including randomly changing gameplay elements which gives the game a chaotic, wacky feeling. Unfortunately, the developers removed custom ranked matches and replay support, both of which were present in Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations. I have no fathomable theory as to why they were removed, but they're just shooting themselves in the foot by removing options that most people would expect in an online enabled fighting game. When it comes to the visuals, CyberConnect 2 is second to none. The character models are all finely detailed and are incredibly well animated, though this high detail does come at a price, that being the lip syncing. At least with the English dub, the lip syncing is absolutely horrendous! I'm happy. Happy I knew you. It's clear that the voice actors didn't even attempt to match lip flaps. It's so atrocious that just about anyone could dub over these cutscenes, and aside from using the official voice cast, no one would know the difference. Huh? Who are you? Hello you! I am you too! I'm giving up Nanjing for clamming! Ah. You're what I really am? Quit messing with me! Clams don't eat the way we do, love the way they should, the grass grows, the clams they know. I, I never thought stuff like... No one cares for the clams anymore, therefore, stumble your words. I... What are you doing? I want to be one of the greatest voiceover actresses in all of Canada. What? Puppets, 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 and puppets everywhere! Puppets, 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 puppets on my chair! That's, That's so, so Alfred. Alfred. In terms of the combat, with all the action on screen, it can be hard for the game to keep up, with regular spurts of slowdown rearing their ugly heads. I've also had the game occasionally freeze on me while fighting online opponents. All of this amounts to proof that CyberConnect 2 didn't put much effort into technically refining the in-game engine, and instead focused on making the cutscenes look prettier. Because you know, 
That's the most important part of a game! On the audio front, all of the sound effects you've come to expect from the franchise are present and accounted for, with the original soundtrack perfectly capturing the eastern tone that ninjas are known for. So what's my opinion? Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 is a decent anime game. Is it the best in the franchise? No. I would say that title goes to its predecessor, Ultimate Ninja Storm 2. The game's greatest strengths also lead to its biggest weaknesses. The story mode is grand and the boss fights are exhilarating, but the horrendous pacing ruins them. The battle system is enjoyable, but the roster is heavily unbalanced. Playing against friends online is always a good time, it's just the rest of the community you need to worry about. I'm sure that if you're a Naruto fan, you'll just brush these things aside and enjoy the game for what it is, but I couldn't possibly recommend Storm 3 to anyone looking to get into this franchise. At the end of the day, Naruto Storm 3 has a lot of flash and it does look amazing, but beauty is only skin deep. Regardless, this has been the season 1 finale of the true story. When will I be back? Well, all I can say is this. Watch this space. and my Twitter account.